He has waged cruel war against human nature itself in the persons of a distant people who never offended him, captivating and carrying them into slavery in another hemisphere, determined to keep open a market where men should be bought and sold. He has prostituted them. That will suffice, Mr. Thompson. Well, thank you. Mr. Jefferson, I can't quite make out what it is you're trying to talk about. Slavery, Mr. Rutledge. Ah, oh, yes, you're referring to us as slaves to the king. No, sir. <laughs> I'm referring to our slaves, black slaves. Oh, black slaves. <laughs> then why'd you say so, sir? You trying to hide your meaning? No, sir. Well, just another literary license then. If you like. I don't like, Mr. Jefferson. To us in South Carolina, Black slavery is our peculiar institution and a cherished way of life. Nevertheless, we must abolish it. Nothing is more certainly written in the book of faith that than this people shall be free. Well, I'm not interested in what's written in the book of faith, sir. I'm more interested in what's written in your little paper there. That little paper deals with freedom for Americans. <laughs> Really now, now Mr. Adams is calling our black slaves Americans. Are they now? They are. They're people, and they're here. If there's any other requirement, I've never heard of it. They are here, yes, but they are not people, sir. They are property. No, sir. They are people who are being treated as property. I tell you, the rights of human nature are deeply wounded by this infamous practice. And see to your own wounds, Mr. Jefferson, for you are a practitioner, are you not? I have already resolved to release my slaves. Well, then I am sorry, for you have also resolved the ruination of your personal economy. Economy? There's always economy. There's more to this than a filthy purse string Rutledge. It's an offense against man and God. It's a stinking business, Mr. Rutledge. A stinking business! Is it really, Mr. Hopkins? <sighs> and what's that I smell floating down from the north? Could it be the aroma of hypocrisy? For who holds the other end of that filthy purse string, Mr. Adams? <laughs> Our northern brethren are feeling a bit tender toward our slaves. Oh, they don't like keeping slaves, no, but they are willing to be considerable carriers of them to others. <laughs> they are willing for the shilling. Or haven't you heard, Mr. Adams? Clink, clink. 